Prince Andrew tried to gatecrash deadly siege, as fresh humiliation piled on Duke. The Duke of York's reputation is already low and new revelations will do little to dispel the public's view of him as the very embodiment of entitlement and privilege. Prince Andrew is seeing what is left of his reputation get dragged through the mud with the release of a new three-part TV drama. A very royal scandal on Amazon Prime which charts the events surrounding his remarkable interview with Emily Maitlis in 2019 during which he addresses sex assault claims and his friendship with Jeffrey Epstein. Hello viewers, please remember to subscribe and click on the notifications bell icon, so you will be notified whenever we upload new cookies about the British royal family. The Duke's public image is already low with Brits seeing him as the worst embodiment of royal entitlement. And that was on display during one episode that has also emerged this week. A new account of the deadly Iranian embassy siege in 1980 has revealed the Duke demanded to visit the scene as the operation was ongoing. Seven people, including five terrorists, were killed when Iranian Arabs campaigning for sovereignty of Khuzestan province took 26 people hostage at the building in London. The siege lasted six days and only came to an end when the SAS stormed the building. But according to Ben McIntyre's new book recounting the events of the siege, Andrew seemed to think it was a ripping yarn. Writing in The Siege, the remarkable story of the greatest SAS hostage drama, McIntyre reveals a then 20-year-old Andrew, had been watching TV coverage of the siege, reports the Daily Mail. He ordered his protection unit to contact the siege police commander John Dello because he would like to visit for lunch. McIntyre reveals the request was refused by stunned cops dealing with a precarious situation where lives were on the line. McIntyre writes, the last thing Dello needed, at this delicate moment, was a princeling and his entourage in the building standing around asking questions and eating sandwiches. He adds, the young royal wished to be where the action was. And he was used to getting what he wanted. The siege started on April 30, 1980 with gunmen making a number of demands, including the release of prisoners and safe passage out of the UK. Despite some minor concessions, the group of Iranian Arabs became impatient and on the sixth day murdered a hostage and threw their body out the window of the embassy. The SAS initiated Operation Nimrod to get the remaining hostages to safety. Five of the gunmen were killed when special forces stormed the building with one hostage also dying during the 17-minute raid. Broadcast live on TV, the siege was a defining moment in the early days of Margaret Thatcher's time in power and brought the SAS into the public psyche for the first time. The building itself was not able to reopen until 1993 due to a fire started during the assault. Andrew served in the Royal Navy and saw action during the Falklands War as a Sea King helicopter co-pilot. Prince Andrew needs to move out of Royal Lodge right now. The outcast, Duke of York has to protect his daughters. Anyone watching Prince Andrew's interview with Newsnight's Emily Maitlis five years ago will understand exactly why the Duke won't move out of Royal Lodge. Not only is he pompous, self-regarding and woefully deficient in empathy, he clearly finds it challenging to see another's point of view. Fair enough that he doesn't want to capitulate to his older brother's wishes to evict him. Spares are notoriously petulant when reminded where they sit in the hierarchy. But there is a key reason why Andrew needs to move out of the lodge, not in the future but right now, to protect his daughters. The 65-year-old Duke will never restore his reputation, he's old, soiled, damaged goods and no amount of charitable work or outings at church with more upright members of the family are going to change that. But Princess Beatrice and Princess Eugenie are young women with royal adjacent lives ahead of them. For their sake, and in honor of their hard work and discretion, their father needs to do the right thing and hightail it to Frogmore Cottage pronto. For all their flaws and failings, one thing the Duke and Duchess of York have done commendably is raise strong, loyal and respectful children. Beatrice, 36, and Eugenie, 34, are exemplary daughters and cousins. 
they appear to have navigated the horror of their father's downfall with aplomb despite the deep pain and embarrassment he must have caused them. Likewise, they have upheld their mother at every turn. Supporting her through cancer and managing their own fears for her health straight on the back of their father's disgrace must have tested their grit and resilience. What's more, they've had to navigate the rift between their cousins William and Harry. Eugenie, particularly, was close to Harry and Meghan and will have been dismayed at what has unfolded. Who knows to what extent she is still in touch with the couple. What is clear is that she has not taken sides, evidenced by Prince William asking both her and Beatrice to join him at this year's Royal Ascot. The longer Andrew clings to the thirty-room Royal Lodge instead of moving to the more modest five-bed Frogmore cottage, the more likely it is that his daughters will be to some extent dragged down with him. Beatrice and Eugenie's chances of having more significant roles in the royal family might be under threat. It was understandable that the king didn't put pressure on his brother while Sarah Ferguson battled cancer but now it's time. Next month the monarch will stop funding his brother's security detail. If Andrew has any shred of sense, not to mention compassion, his legacy should be gifting his daughters a future free from the scandal and indulgent behavior that has characterized his later years. In 2022, three years after the Newsnight interview, the Duke paid an out-of-court settlement to his accuser, Virginia Dufry, ending a civil case against him in the U.S. He accepted no liability and continues to deny he had sex with the then 17-year-old. Yet Andrew has already compromised his children. By inviting Beatrice to sit in a planning meeting for his Newsnight interview he risked her reputation. When challenged by Maitlis during the subsequent interview, he invoked an alleged trip with Beatrice to a birthday party at Pizza Express in Woking as an alibi to disprove the claim he was with Jufri. This week, Beatrice and Eugenie will once again be thrust back into the spotlight with the release of A Very Royal Scandal, the Amazon Prime show where Michael Sheen will portray the Duke as belligerent and deluded. If Rufus Sewell last year skewered Andrew in Netflix's scoop, this new dramatization of the Duke's spectacular fall from grace is reportedly even more excoriating. The late Queen's adored second son will apparently be characterized by his nastiness and predilection for telling others to get out. In refusing to move out of Royal Lodge, the Duke is missing a trick. He and the Duchess would be inheriting a stunningly renovated home, Andrew could even turn the yoga studio into a cinema, an activity more to his taste. As he manages his siblings' eviction, this is not a battle the king can lose. Cancer will have concentrated his mind and should his health decline he will not wish to leave William with the Andrew problem. Likewise, Cancer, his wife's and his father's, has equally concentrated William's mind. Thanks for watching, please don't forget to like this video and drop comments, and most importantly don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything.